You are now listening to the homily of Father Francis Lynch, parish priest of St. Mary's Church in Chislehurst, UK. This service is provided by the Lexio Divina team, part of the LOV Verbum Dei ministry, who invites you all to share this reflection and their love for the Word of God. The Gospel is the good news of salvation for mankind. That salvation is only through Jesus Christ. As Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You alone have the words of eternal life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Firstly, I'd like to greet the members of the LOV community and also the Logical Bible Study Ministry who are based in Australia. It is by exploring the world of Christ that we root ourselves in Him, deepen our relationship with Him, and see His presence in our lives. Now let's read the Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 32. Preparation of today's homily. The tax collectors and the sinners were all seeking the company of Jesus to hear what he had to say. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, This man, they said, welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he spoke this parable to them. What man among you with a hundred sheep, losing one, would not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the missing one till he found it. And when he found it, would he not joyfully take it on his shoulders? And then, when he got home, call together his friends and neighbors. Rejoice with me, he would say, I have found my sheep that was lost. In the same way, I tell you, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over 99 virtuous men who had no need of repentance. Or again, what woman with 10 drachmas would not, if she lost one, light a lamp and sweep out the house and search thoroughly till she found it? And then when she found it, call together her friends and neighbors. Rejoice with me, she would say, I have found the drachma I lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing among the angels of God over one repentant sinner. He also said, A man has two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, let me have the share of the estate that will come to me. So the father divided the property between them. A few days later, the younger son got together everything he had and left for a distant country where he squandered his money on a life of debauchery. When he had spent it all, that country experienced a severe famine, and now he began to feel the pinch, so he hired himself to one of the local inhabitants who put him on his farm to feed the pigs, and he would willingly have filled his belly with the husks the pigs were eating, but no one offered him anything. Then he came to his senses and said, How many of my father's paid servants have more food than the ones, and here am I dying of hunger. I will leave this place and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as one of your paid servants. So he left the place and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with pity. He ran to the boy, clasped him in his arms and kissed him tenderly. Then he said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the robe, the best robe, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the calf we have been fattening and kill it. We are going to have a feast, a celebration, because this son of mine was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now the elder son was out in the fields and on his way back, as he drew near the house, he could hear the music and dancing. Calling one of the servants, he asked what it was all about. 
Your brother has come, replied the servant, and your father has killed a calf we have we had fattened because he has got him back safe and sound. He was angry then and refused to go in, and his father came out to plead with him. Well, he answered his father, Look, all these years I have slaved for you, and never once disobeyed your orders, yet you never offered me so much as a kid for me to celebrate with my friends. But for this son of yours, when he comes back after swallowing up your property, he and his women, you kill the calf we had been fattening. The father said, My son, you are always with me, and all I have is yours. But it was only right we should celebrate and rejoice, because your brother here was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is found. Today is a rather different day from the normal uh, Sunday homily because <clears throat> just a few days ago, um, the Queen, who's been the Queen of England and the Commonwealth and many countries for over 70 years, has just died. And this has um, had a profound effect on the people of Britain and the people throughout the world. She was, I think, the longest serving monarch and there's been an awful lot of news coverage of her, of her life, of what opinions we knew, and the people who have reacted to her and with her. And so I'd just like to use that as a bit of a starting point. Even in church today, this morning, um, instead of the normal Mass, which would have been the Mass of the day, or a Mass maybe for Our Lady, um, today I said a Requiem Mass for the Queen, and we're asking for prayers for the repose of her soul. What does this, um, how, how can this affect a Christian? We could say something about the Queen herself. Um, she was, throughout her life, a dedicated Christian. From the moment that she spoke publicly for the first time when she was about 14, I didn't know this until I'd heard it on the radio, um, from that time, she dedicated to herself to the service of God and the service of the nation. When I was a scout, our promise used to be, to serve, um, to serve the Queen and to serve God, to serve God and the Queen. And she obviously couldn't serve herself, but instead she put in the nation and the Commonwealth. The Empire had um, only just passed away at that time. When something like this happens, it is normal for the, all the television stations to start looking back at life, particularly looking back at the rain, but to some extent, looking back at the whole of the life. And there isn't much of a difference, actually. She was reigning for 70 years, and she was 96 when she died. So most of her life, the vast majority of her life, was taken up in the rain. And in the last few days, and I'm sure it will continue, people will be looking at her life, examining it, generally speaking, in a very respectful way, in a very loving way, but nevertheless, looking and examining looking at her life, looking at the things she said, the decisions she made, and, um, and saying something about them, in other words, judging them. And maybe we should take this opportunity to do something similar to our own lives. Maybe now that the Queen has died, as well as looking back at her life, we can look back at our own individual lives. Some of us will be quite old, some of you, I'm not including myself here, will be quite young. Some only starting out in their adult life. But wherever you are in your life, whether you're near its end or fairly near, hopefully, its beginning, um, it's worth examining and seeing what you've done so far, why you've done it, and what's been your guiding forces. And I would recommend this for anyone at the moment. I'm going to do it myself, not just now in front of you, uh, um, but I'm going to try to do it myself. I'm going to think, I'm 68, by the way, and I'm going to be looking at my life and thinking, what sort of things have I done? What have been the guiding principles? What has been my motivation throughout my life? And the motivation um, could be a number of things. In many cases, the things that motivate us 
are actually quite bad and sordid. We're motivated in some extent, to some extent, by greed, by pride, by lust, and by, generally speaking, the seven deadly sins. But we are also motivated at the same time by much more positive motivations. Um, things like love, things like love of the family, things like patriotism, which is love of our country and the country's values. Things like wanting to improve ourselves, wishing to improve the lives of other people, general benevolence, and maybe above all these things, and as it were, um, holding the strings will be the love of God. In classical, in classical Christian theology, we are dedicated, uh, we are motivated first by the love of God, and through that, by the love of um, other people, love towards other people. And the love of God should spill out, should overflow into the love that we show towards other people. And we show this in various ways. We show it in love for our family. We show it in care, in dedication. We show it in love for other people that we meet. We show it in care for those people who um, need our assistance. And we also show it in love for our country, which might be generally wanting, because our country is what we're actually closest to, we actually live there, um, we meet our countrymen all the time. Um, when, we sh when we think of love of our country, we're actually thinking of trying to improve the country itself for the use of other human beings and the human beings who live here. Patriotism in that sense is important because it's much easier to pretend that we love people who are at a distance than loving those who are close by and whom we can actually help or hinder in their, in their um, journey through life. So just to summarize, I would say um, that at this time, there's been an intense preoccupation in the life of the Queen who has just died. And maybe we should try to focus the same spotlight on our own lives, see what we're doing well and improve it, see where we're motivated by, by evil desires and try to suppress them. And I think I'll end there and we'll end with a blessing. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lesio Divina team hopes that this homily has helped you deeply to welcome the Word of God and has given you the strength to put the Word into practice where you are. You can send us your prayer intentions by emailing them to us using the following email address LOV underscore Verbum Dei V E R B U M D E I at Outlook.com. All these prayer intentions will be prayed for in our daily Angelus group. Call on WhatsApp and also during our different weekly prayer groups gathering both in person and online check our website in the description for days and time if this homely has enlightened you or touched you in any way please share it with your relatives friends community and on your social media have a blessed week <laughs>